So our, our, our focus uh, that we created at Capstone is we want to provide a great client experience beyond what they could do on their own. And for advisors, we want to support a platform and culture for advisors to thrive. We want advisors to be able to do what they do best, and that's create a great experience for their client, not have to deal with the minutia of running their business on a day-to-day -day basis. We also at Capstone, we created four values that we feel are really important for all of our advisors to uh, kind of adhere to, and it's something that we focus on on a consistent basis here. Uh, so our core values, there's four of them, I'll just read them out. Number one, we wanna be sincere. We care about each interaction and the enrichment of people's lives. Number two, we're ethical. We act with integrity, honesty, and professionalism. Number three, we're life learners. We're committed to innovating and developing solutions. And number four, we wanna be accountable. Do what you say you're going to do. So those are our, our four, four core values that we've instilled into Capstone, and you'll see that kind of permeate, hopefully, throughout the relationships that we have with our clients. And while we have uh, a specific type of advisor that we look for, uh, we recognize that, uh, or please recognize that we come from diverse backgrounds and we cover a pretty broad region um, and geography um, starting to grow. Um, but with those uh, advisors and with those core values and the people we're looking for, we have kind of a singular focus or to the process, which is starting with the big picture of financial planning. Where are you now and where do you want to be? What can we do to help you get there with, let's say, the smoothest ride possible, uh, trying to eliminate the roller coaster? Um, what do you have for retirement plans and tools with your employer? What do you have for insurance? What do you need? Uh, what can we do to make sure that your tax uh, picture looks good? How can we work with your CPA uh, to maybe try and prevent some uh, leakage of returns due to taxes? Um, wealth distribution strategies. Once you arrive there, what can we do to maintain your, um, we have your assets and we want to give you an income uh, for life that you cannot outlive. How do we do that? Um, these, uh, this, all these different tools and all these different focuses of the process, um, we also start with the investment committee uh, that Ryan heads up. Every week, uh, our investment committee comes together on Thursdays uh, and we zoom in. Uh, and so we, again, kind of bring all that ge geographic regions into one location. And each week we discuss <clears throat> um, what are we holding for our clients? What are in our portfolios or in our models or for our client, uh, our client assets? Um, what are we not holding? What are things that we're either avoiding on purpose or what are things that maybe we should be adding? Uh, what's research showing today? You know, where's the economy headed? Um, what do we like and what do we not like? And then lastly, at our investment committee meetings, we'll have guest speakers come in, which provide different think tanks from a lot of different institutions, money managers uh, that come in and, and, and challenge us and make sure that we're doing the best that we can for clients and it just pro provides a different thought uh, to continue to sharpen our sword. Uh, in that investment committee, the things that we really discuss and, and try to adhere to is our process. When we manage money for clients, we want to have a disciplined process. We want to take the institutional process, I know I'm going to overuse that word, we're going to take the institutional process and we're going to bring it to the individual. We find that institutions do a really good job at creating an investment policy and staying disciplined. They'll create an asset allocation, what amount of stocks versus bonds versus alternatives we should hold. They'll create ranges around those targets, and then they'll start to uh, shade a higher or lower based on what the economy might be doing today. We find the average individual invests on emotion. They invest with the thought of the day. What's a new good idea? What have I heard from my neighbor? What did I see on TV? And that, that, that um, investment strategy provides an outcome typically that they're always chasing. And so we want to have a disciplined, structured process, which is what our investment committee tries to do. As we create an asset allocation weighting, we want to focus on three Ps. And when we talk about three Ps with a client or, or a new, uh, new individual who we're just meeting, most people will think, oh, performance. Yes, three Ps, first one's going to be performance. That's always what most individuals want to talk about. 
And unfortunately, you've heard it before, performance is not a repeatable event. We do not focus on performance. We focus on three Ps. The number one P is we focus on the people. If we're going to choose a, if we're going to asset allocate some money towards a certain uh, area or give some funds to a, a money manager, who are the people managing that fund? It is, a, is it a team approach or a single person? Um, what have they done before? Where are they from? What, what assets have they managed before? So who are the people? What is their process? Uh, is it an index fund that rebalances on a consistent basis based on some quantitative figures? Uh, is it a bottom-up stock research manager? Is it a top-down econ economical uh, research manager? So what's their process? How do they manage their fund? And then last, what's the price? What are we paying for different investment uh, investments that we place clients' funds into? Is it a very uh, low-cost index fund to get broad exposure, which we do use <clears throat> in certain areas of the market? Or do we want to pay a little bit of money for a active manager who has shown to provide great risk-adjusted returns over time? Those three Ps, people, process, and price. If we can get those correct, those are repeatable events. People, process, and price are repeatable. And then that fourth P, performance, will fall into place if we get those first three correct. So that's really what we focus on in our institutional process when we're managing money. And when we bring those, when, when we do that process and we bring in those outside uh, investment managers, the mutual fund uh, wholesalers or mutual fund managers, uh, one thing that we keep in mind is we work solely for you. Um, we use uh, Riskalyze for our risk assessment. We use Money Guide Pro for, um, for financial planning. We have the client portal that allows us to collaborate with you and uh, utilize those tools. And really that helps us do the job we need to do for you. Uh, and that's important because we at Capstone take our fiduciary obligation very seriously. Uh, we are legally bound to work in your best interest. And I think that's, that's a, big, uh, a, a big statement that is often kind of uh, tucked away or, or uh, overlooked. We cannot accept a commission from an outside uh, mutual fund company. Um, we're, we're different than, than the other guys. We can only be paid by our clients, and that helps us focus on the fiduciary standard of working only in our client's interest. At this time, I, uh, we have a few minutes left. Um, can we, or if you have questions, please, we should have uh, uh, let you know. But if you have questions, please type them into the chat field if you're able. And we'll take, uh, we'll take a few questions uh, before we close it out. And so we'll give you a second there to write a question down. I'm happy to discuss anything that are on top of your minds today. Okay, it looks like a question came in. With your investment process, have you changed anything in the current environment? Um, yeah, good question. So I think the, the, the current environment has been challenging, right? 2020 has been a challenging year for many different reasons. Uh, but I think the, the whole reason um, that we have our investment committee and create a process is to stay disciplined. There are, there's, this is a very challenging year, but there's been challenging years before. There's been really good years before, and we're gonna cycle through really good years and really challenging years. And if we change that discipline strategy in difficult years or in, in really positive years, that's gonna come back to bite us later. So we've really, we've really held to our guns and stayed really uh, disciplined. There's been definite winners and losers in this environment, you know, and, and, and Back a few months ago, we really tried to focus assets towards things that were really stable, big companies that have done really well. And in, in the last few months, some of those companies have really run up in price. Their stocks have done very well, maybe a little too well. And so we've tried to strategically place assets where we find a little bit of value. And as the economy is starting to open back up, there are going to be areas that start to outperform that we're now starting to add to to try and find where's the value. And the same thing in fixed income. There's certain areas in fixed income right now that are just not attractive. Um, you know, long-term government bonds, for instance, we're getting paid very little to hold assets for a long time and not get paid, right? So we've really tried to focus on where can we put money uh, that's going to earn earn more than inflation and taxes, 
but also be risk adjusted. And so there are different things that we're always looking for. Uh, even in this environment that we want to stay disciplined and not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Alrighty, and it looks like there was another question. How are we different from other RAs? I think what we just kind of listed out here, um, our growth doubled in, more than doubled in a year, um, our core values uh, and that as a focus. Um, the tools that we have, well, they're the tools and everybody can buy those, um, but I think it's how we use them and how we put the client first uh, that really um, helps us to do our job in a, in a different way. And then also the delivery of that institutional process to the individual uh, to try and take some of the emotion out of it and focus on, on the longer term goals of where you want to be. Perfect. And it looks like we did get another question. Are you making different plans dependent on who wins the election in November? That's yeah, it's a good question. I think we do, we are not in the position of forecasting first off, right? So we aren't trying to position ahead of the election necessarily. Uh, there might be winners and losers though, based on who wins the election. Definitely. Um, you know, one thing I could think of is international companies might perform better under one uh, type of um, one type of president versus a different one, right? And so we do want to be prepared. We want to be nimble. We are proactive at Capstone. You know, we try to be proactive. We are reaching out and doing what we think is best for the clients proactively. And so as that comes uh, or in the next couple of months, month and a half, there might be some changes that we make to portfolios. But one thing we've also found is that companies that are going to continue to do what they've done, they might have to navigate and take some turns that maybe change based on who's the president. But and I've said it before, Pepsi's going to sell pop and Apple's going to sell iPhones, regardless of who wins the presidency. And so we really try and focus on that long term. And I think what you find is that even as the, the parties might shift at the presidency, this country's moved forward and companies have moved forward. And so we try to really stay that disciplined long term view. I think one of the things to keep in mind is uh, we're not in the crystal ball business. Um, and if we think about 2016, every expert in the world minus three, Trump, Conway, and his other advisor knew that Hillary Clinton was going to win and portfolios were positioned that way until she didn't. So, and had to do a, a lot of undoing and a lot of unwinding of positions that were assumed to be absolutely true. Uh, we're trying not to do that. We work with the situation we're given. We don't try and predict the situation and move in anticipation because I think we've seen time and time again, no matter how many people tell you on TV that they can do that, it's just not true. All right. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, our next Capstone Coffee Conversation will be the second Tuesday of October, and they'll continue on the second Tuesdays. Uh, and the next one will actually talk about advice, uh, aligning your CPA with your investment management, right? Some things to focus on as we approach year end uh, and that might involve your CPA and investment management. We'd really like if you would follow us on social media. Capstone has a Facebook page and an Instagram page, uh, Capstone Wealth Advisors. And if you want more information, uh, go to our website, capstonewealthadvisors.com. Uh, and again, these are just these conversations are a way for us to just start this conversation. This obviously isn't going to answer everybody's questions, uh, but if there's something in here that piques your interest or you want to follow up, please reach out to us and we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. See you next month.